Okay, so here we are. We are about to make some homemade hand lotion. What I have here, because I do not own a double boiler, is just a pot with some water in it underneath, and then a measuring cup thing. Um, a Pyrex glass dish or something like that would probably work better, but I got this at the dollar store. Uh, it's plastic, so I went ahead and used this instead, especially since I didn't want to use something that was going to be used for food and for my homemade products, both. So here I have um, emulsifying wax, uh, a quarter cup, just like the recipe below states, and I also have here um, a quarter cup of my oils. I have a little bit of shea butter, I have some cocoa butter, and then I have a quarter cup total of oils. Uh, if you aren't sure what oils to use, be sure to check out my other video on what oils are right for your products. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that together. A quarter cup of each, and I get mixed together. I'm going to go ahead and put the pan on and get this water to boil, um, maybe a low boil, and then we're going to go ahead and melt it and we'll see what it looks like then. Okay, it's been about two minutes. I went ahead and got this water boiling and I stirred it around until the emulsifying wax and all of the butters um, have melted and now this is what we have. It looks just like the oil. So I'm going to go ahead and take it to the counter and I'll show you what we need to do next. Okay, we're back to the counter. Here we are. We're two minutes into this and we're already like over half done. This is so easy. So I took the cup out of the pot here and it's all melted now. Now the next thing you can do, it depends on what you want, um, what direction you want to go in with this. If you're using the base recipe, which is really super simple, it's just a quarter cup of oil, a quarter cup of emulsifying wax, and one and a quarter cups of water. That's it. And if you're using a really simple oil, um, something like olive oil or grapeseed oil or safflower, sunflower oil, something that you can find in your grocery store, um, then you are really got it really easy. Um, I've made really simple recipes and they've all turned out really well, but um, unfortunately some of our uh, the people in our family have some skin issues, like I have some really sensitive skin and things like that, and so that's why I've been experimenting with the different oils over time and I've found some different ones that I've really liked. Um, and then there's some other optional ingredients you can add. Well, before I go on further, make sure when you go to add oils um, to any of your uh, cosmetic issues, you know, for your uh, homemade products and things like that, make sure you don't just add any oil. Make sure you refer to that video about which oils you should use because things that are in the grocery store like vegetable oil, things that have like canola and cottonseed and different types of oil, you know, corn oil and things like this, these are not oils that are suitable for skin. Um, so don't use any of those ones. Make sure you use one of the ones that I listed in the video. Um, one that's suitable for cosmetic use. Now once you've got your oil um, melted, you can either just proceed with the hot water or you can add some of your optional ingredients, which I am going to go ahead and do. I'm going to add two capsules of vitamin E. Again, this is completely optional. We didn't used to add preservatives to our lotion, and my very, very first batch of lotion, not so long ago, my very first batch of lotion molded. <laughs> I didn't think that could happen. We just kept it in our bathroom sink and you know, we were using it, and one day I opened the cap to see, you know, how much was left, and it was molded on the top, and I was like, oh, that's so gross, I can't believe that I didn't notice that. Ever since then, I have been adding um, either preservatives to the lotion, or I keep it in the fridge. Keeping it in the fridge does keep it from going bad. That really is effective. But when you're used to using lotion that's uh, warm, you know, like a... Uh, just room temperature, using lotion from the fridge is a little bit of a shock. <laughs> a bit of a shock to the skin. Okay, so here we have our two capsules of vitamin E. I am gonna go ahead and add one more preservative. I got some citric acid from the um, health food store. It was really, really inexpensive and you only need just an eighth of a teaspoon for one batch of lotion here. And what this does is it lowers the pH of the lotion to a low enough level that things like um, mold can't grow on it. So this really helps a lot. So there's that. So there are option, the two optional ingredients that you have there are the two preservatives. 
both all natural. And then one more optional ingredient you could add if you want to would be any sort of a scent. Um, make sure if you're going to use an essential oil, make sure you use one that's uh, safe for the skin. Um, some of them can be irritating to the skin, which would definitely be a bad thing. Um, for a lotion, we would not want, you know, something that's irritating to our skin in our lotion that's intended to soothe our skin. So if you're going to use a scent, go ahead and add that now. Um, different hobby stores and things like that have stuff that's specifically for um, scenting lotions or soaps or things like that. Make sure that you read the ingredients on the, in those because one of the things we're trying to get away from by making our own lotion um, is the chemicals and things and some of those um, perfumes that are designed for the specific purpose might have some of those same chemicals that we're trying to get away from. So there are the three optional ingredients that, um, that I'm going to add. Some other optional ingredients that you could add if you want to would be zinc oxide. Um, this, remember this from the video about the homemade deodorant. But if you add this to your lotion, it, you know, in really high amounts, this can be um, like a sunscreen. You can make your own sunscreen by adding zinc oxide to this base lotion recipe. If you add just a little bit of it, um, you know, say like um, a quarter of a teaspoon or something like that, you can make it to where your lotion has uh, an antiperspirant property to it. And also, um, zinc oxide can help uh, keep feet from stinking. Uh, it has this, you know, again, deodorant property to it. Just, that's why it's in the deodorant. So if you add it to your lotion and then you're going to use this as, say, a foot lotion or something like a peppermint foot lotion, this would be a good addition to that. That would really help uh, keep odors at bay. Other than that, I think that's about all the optional ingredients that I'm aware of that I've added to my lotion. And then the next thing you're going to want is the hot water. Hot water. You want the temperature to be around 120 degrees. Um, I just use the water from the pan, from the, the double boiler. Usually it's too warm. Yeah, it just said that it was about 130. So I'm adding some cold water from my kettle into the pan. There it is. 119 now. That's close enough. So one and a quarter cups of this. And you'll be surprised once you add the water to the oil. Watch what happens. It turns white, <laughs> just like lotion should be. The emulsifying wax actually works on the molecular level. Have you ever seen like a, a salad dressing or something like that where the different properties have se separated? You know, there's the vinegar with the water on, or the oil on top. Basically, the way emulsifying wax works is that it bonds to the oil. The wax bonds to the oil and then when you add the water it bonds each um, you know uh, molecule of the wax. The wax bonds each molecule of oil to several molecules of water. Well this makes it so that it can penetrate more deeply into the skin and also water is moisturizing to the skin in itself. So just rubbing straight oil on your skin would be too heavy. Straight water does nothing. The two of them put together makes a good lotion. So now that we've added that together, you don't really have to stir it, although I do. Um, and now it's ready. It can go in any container that you want to. I'm going to go ahead and pour mine into a cleaned out shampoo bottle. And then the lotion is ready to use as soon as it cools down. Once it cools down, even though it looks like it's really thin right now, you'll see that it'll really thicken up to the perfect consistency of lotion. If you've used one of the optional ingredients I mentioned earlier, the zinc oxide, you're going to want to keep stirring this until it's gotten pretty thick because the zinc oxide has a tendency to settle to the bottom and then it doesn't get evenly distributed throughout the lotion. So you'll want to keep stirring it, maybe stir it once and then walk away for five minutes, stir it again, and walk away for another five minutes, stir it again, and just keep doing that until the lotion has gotten fairly thick. Um, it doesn't have to be super thick like to the point where it can't pour into a bottle anymore because this will get that thick that if you were to leave it in here and then pour it into your bottle that you're going to be using you'll notice it's too thick to pour it's going to be kind of um, you know chunky by then but anyway um, I hope you found this video helpful 
Um, homemade hand lotion is super, super easy to do. As you saw, it took maybe five minutes measuring out all the ingredients, melting it, you know, and then putting it in the bottle. And the base recipe is so simple. You can make it with as little as three ingredients, that emulsifying wax and oil of your choice and water. Or you can make it as complicated as you want uh, by experimenting with different oils and things and different uh, butters and just different stuff like that the zinc oxide to make it tailored to what you want whether you want something that's good for stretch marks or something that's good for eczema or something that's good for sensitive skin or if you're wanting to get rid of wrinkles or if you're you know um, hoping to prevent stretch marks etc this base recipe um, you know when you use the optional ingredients with it it can make whatever type of lotion it is you're looking to make and you know fit your needs for whatever it is the family um, needs so I, f I really hope you found this video helpful. If you have any um, questions, feel free to ask, and I'm Frugal Green Girl. Thanks for watching.